Hi everyone, welcome back to JL Tech. Um, today, I'm presuming you're watching this video because you're having the same issue as me. So I'm just going to quickly walk, run through the issue of what the issue is. Um, so here we have our bookings form. Um, obviously we have our data here, the buttons, um, and then obviously the data grid here. Now this is using an MSQL uh, database which is hosted in the cloud. Um, so we can add new, let's just put a random date there random this random date of birth and just random costs we can hit save and the data will import not a problem um, but let's say that we've paid the full amount now so the remaining balance is zero and we hit save it's going to give us an error occurred while saving data and we've got a little red message here and it says update requires a valid update command when past data row collection with modified rows now I have spent hours on YouTube trying to figure this out um, and then last night I finally figured out um, what's causing the issue so I'm going to walk you through the issue now and get you working as well so once again this is for the MSQL um, so we're going to close down my application here and what we're going to do is we're going to go into our um, SQL Server Management Studio um, and this is the database that I'm using here so um, as you can see they all allow nulls and it's fine so in order for this to work you need to add what's known as a primary key so you need to do this on your actual database then you also need to set it on your visual basic data set so you need to do it twice so um, this is a data set now when you add a primary key it has to be a unique um, form of entry so on your um, so let me just show you here so obviously you have your total cost your deposit amount nothing here really is is going to be unique because the data booking is obviously going to be multiple bookings for a day. The booking name, people have the same names all over the world. Um, date of birth, obviously, you're not just born, one person born. Um, the total cost can be different, deposit can be different. You know, all of this is not really unique. So, in this case, we need to create a new, um, a new column name. Um, but if you already have a, let's say, one of these options for you in your database is a customer mobile phone number then what you could do is use that as your primary key because obviously the mobile phone number is going to be unique um, or maybe an address or something like that um, but because all these are not unique what we're going to do is we're going to add a new column here and I'm just going to call this ID and this is going to be a number let me just find number here uh, numeric that's fine um, we're not going to allow nulls so we're going to click the ID tab here and we're just going to scroll up and we're going to go down to where it says identity specification and we're just going to double click this to make it yes and it's going to increment in one and one so this just means it's going to automatically increment for us now if we right click here we can set primary key uh, which looks like it's worked but if you now press save you're going to get an error saying saving changes is not permitted the change you have made require the following tables to be dropped and recreated you have either made changes to a table that cannot be recreated or enabled the option prevent saving changes that require the table to be recreated so to fix this we're going to go to tools options go down to designers tab here on the left and then we're going to untick this option here prevent saving changes that require table recreation and we're just going to hit OK and now when we hit save there you go our changes have now saved so we can minus out of this now and we can go back into Visual Studio and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our data source and we're going to edit data set with designer now this might not work straight away we might need to restart Visual Basic um, so let's give this a try anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to hit configure and we're going to go with advanced options and here where it says refresh the data table we're just going to add and press OK and then finish and now if this has worked it's going to give us an error message saying that we need a primary key would you like to import this from the database um, and obviously then we're going to uh, press yes um, it's going to freeze here this is normal um, it does for me anyway not sure if it will for you um, but if it does then obviously that's fine and as you can see here updating queries cannot be automatically generated because your select query does not include some primary key columns do you wish to add primary key columns to your query we're going to hit yes and this now should automatically uh, uh, in 
insert that ID tab that we made just on our table. Just let it load once again. Doesn't seem to have worked. Does it work? Okay, we're still going. Okay, so that message has gone now. Is it going to include? Yes, it's included. Right. So we now have this, and as you can see, we also have the little key, which means that this now ID is unique. So what we need to do now is we need to go, first of all, we're going to do it for our light plugin. Um, this is just in my case here. So we're going to just right click here, edit columns, add, and then scroll down to ID. Going to hit close. And then we're going to scroll down to do, 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 do. Uh, in fact we're going to add it first so we've got our ID in there and then we're going to um, edit columns again and I believe it's automatically done it um, unless it's down here actually OK, so we now have our ID column here. What we also need to do now is go to our normal bookings plugin, uh, which we can't see it there. Let's go bookings. So this is the one we, we saw earlier. And we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to edit column. We're going to add a column. It's going to data bound it. And it's obviously the ID. Uh, close. We can move the ID up. Um, And normally it asks what the increment is, but I'm not seeing that right now for some reason, um, which is odd. It might be on the data set actually. So let's right click this. Yeah, here it is. Um, so our autumn increment seed, it, we're going to put plus one as it's on minus one at the moment, but we're just going to do plus one. Um, auto increment true, allow DB nor false. Um, and we are good to go. So we're going to save changes here. And we're now going to start debugging our program. Now this should work now. If it doesn't, we will need to restart VB Studio just for it to reconnect. Um, but we're just going to log in here and take a look. So we can see our ID column. We're going to add a new one. Uh, we're just going to once again set it as random, so booking name, whatever, um, whatever, total cost, we'll put it as 2, 2, 1, 2, and hit save. An error occurred while saving data. Right, okay, so it doesn't seem to have worked then, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly save all, and then we're going to restart Visual Basic. Um, so we're just going to close down and restart. Always worth a test just in case it did work however in this, from my case it didn't work there. Um, just need to reconnect to the um, program here because obviously what it will do now is it will talk to the ba database, regain that connection. Um, so yeah. Uh, what we're also going to do right now is we're just going to right click this uh, Kurt uh, Tat, which is just a table name. Uh, we're going to configure advanced and we just want to double check that this refresh table is still ticked and in this case it is if it isn't then retick it um, so let's um, start the program it's loading up now great so what we can do now is just put in our username and then we're going to hit close so we'll add a new and we'll just put in bookie name, uh, random date of birth, 1111. Gonna hit save and error code while saving data. So that should auto increment. So there's something wrong here that's stopping that from auto increment, um, which I'm not really sure why. Oh, here we go. Auto increment is false. Um, not really sure why that was on false. Um, okay, not really sure what I've done here. Um, oh, God, what have I done? Let's just get rid of that and then just go back to properties. 
Um, so we're just going to put this as plus one again, or just one. There you go. So that's saved. Now we're going to save the changes, and now it should auto increment for us. So I'm not sure. I think I did that by uh, scrolling the mouse wheel there. Um, so it probably would have worked the first time, to be honest. So if I add new, yeah. So the ID now here is gone up to three. Um, so we're going to add a set of random date again, bookie name, whatever. Random date of birth, two cost, two of that, and we're going to hit save, and our data has imported. Um, now what's happened is our data booking has now changed. Our customer doesn't want it to be on the 20th, they want it to be on the 21st. So that's not a problem, we'll change that to the 21st, and we'll press save, and the data has imported. And as you can see there, it has updated our record. So we can refresh database and as you can see it has still said the 21st so now we can um, update and even we can delete so let's delete number two here let's delete save changes data imported we can re if we can even go to our light plugin and as you can see number two is missing or we can refresh database and you'll see number two is missing if we add new it's just going to go to four it's going to skip two um, you can fix that with code but it's not really an important thing really um, best to keep it uh, unique um, but yeah I'm just going to show you that again so random that random name random date of birth let's go 222 222 222 and one hour session length data imported thank you very much we're going to refresh database and as you can see all of our data is still there so we've got 134 um, let's delete actually no let's keep that there so let's close down the software and let's go open up uh, SQL and let's right click our table here and edit top 200 rows it's just gonna freeze again it's just my computer being a bit slow and there you go so ID is obviously at the end here because it was the last thing we added but we got 134 which is what syncs um, over to our program that we've made so there you go guys, um, I hope that's helped you fix this issue, I know I spent hours trying to get this working, so if this did help you and got you working again, um, please leave a like um, and subscribe to the channel for more useful Visual Studio and Microsoft SQL tutorials. I will quickly just show you the, uh, the code for the save button just in case you were interested. Uh, so it's just a try, me.validate, me.thetablenamebindingsource.endedit, then it's me dot table manager dot update all and your data set message box saying um, it's imported if it didn't work then we're going to throw an exception an error occurred while saving data um, that's pretty much the code there i will put all of this code in the description below into pastebin so if you want to take a look um, feel free to do so but like i said that's it for this video thank you guys so much for watching hope you stay safe and i'll see you in the next one thank you awesome.